right, welcome back. June 17th, National Apple Strudel Day. I've never made a strudel before. I've eaten plenty of strudel, but I've never made one. Today we're going to try it, and we're going to see how we do. Now, in my research of this, I found so many different variations of strudel. The original strudel you have to make an actual dough for, which we're not going to do today. But for the most part, most people just use store-bought either phyllo dough or puff pastry. I saw so many variations of both. Uh, originally, I was going to do a phyllo dough one, but then I saw this cool braiding technique with the puff pastry one that I thought would make a nicer presentation, so we're going to try that one today with the puff pastry. You can do it either way, whichever your preference is, uh, according to all the different stuff that I saw. Uh, taking a little bit of everything, putting it all together, making it our own today. We're going to cook our apples a little bit. A lot of them you just kind of toss the apples with the sugar and stuff and then you just put it in the dough and bake it and it cooks on the inside. But I saw a variation where you cook the apples ahead of time and kind of caramelize them with the brown sugar and stuff in the pan before you and let it cool down, then use that as your filling. So we're just going to do a bunch of different stuff. There's not a lot of ingredients today, so I'm not going to do the traditional, here's what you need. Because here's what you need. <laughs> I'll just talk you through it as we go. Alrighty, let's get started on this one today. Start preheating your oven 375 and make sure your puff pastry is room temperature, okay? Because it comes frozen in the box, but you want to make sure you have taken it out and it's room temperature. Alrighty, be right back. Alright, let's go today. We have our pan heating up here. We're going to take about two tablespoons of butter and we're going to melt that in our pan here okay now in the meantime just to as that's melting getting ready let's talk it through I took about four gala apples because they were kind of small they weren't real big you can use any kind of baking good for baking apples I mean there's a whole if you google it there's a whole list of apples that are recommended that are good for baking gala apples g-a-l-a are one of them uh, you can use Granny Smith's, you can use, I mean, just look at the list. There's a ton of apples that are really good for baking. So I had gala apples, and I peeled them, and I sliced them pretty thin. Let me show you. They've been soaking in this lemon water so they don't oxidize. See how thin they are? And I just slice them. You know, you peel them, core them, slice them. It's a nice pieces, okay? So like I said, that's been soaking in some lemon water. So I'm going to strain that now. These are going to get thrown into our pan. So I'm just straining my apples. Okay. Now our butter, you can hear, is sizzling away. So what we want to add to that is our brown sugar. We're using a tablespoon of brown sugar, a tablespoon of regular sugar. Just mix that with your butter a teaspoon or of cinnamon okay let's get that all mixed together there and then what you're going to do to this is take your apples and you're going to just toss them right in this pan and we're going to toss them around coat them let them cook make sure you're on about a medium heat okay this will help too to make sure that your apples, when you're eating your strudel, your apples are cooked all the way through because they'll be partially cooked now before they actually even go in to your strudel that you're going to bake, okay? So that's it. We're just going to let these simmer and cook for a few minutes. Let's get our puff pastry ready by rolling that out. Be right back. Okay, so you'll notice when you're cooking your apples if you choose to cook them you don't like I said if you cut them nice and thin you won't have to you can just put them in your puff pastry and roll them raw and they will cook inside of your your strudel but I wanted to cook them and kind of caramelize them first with the sugars you'll notice when you do that that it gives off a lot of moisture the apples so I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of cornstarch into my apples here just a little bit, maybe quarter of a teaspoon, if even that. Okay, because that'll help thicken up these juices that the apples are giving off, and it'll make a nice, really almost apple pie filling. 
kind of filling, okay? And that'll help it also caramelize, you know, and thicken up. I'm repeating myself now, okay? So you just stir in that little bit of cornstarch and you can see already that all that liquid that was in the bottom of the pan is just thickening up like that, okay? So we're just gonna brown this a little bit more and then we'll shut it off, leave it on the side, let it cool down for our filling, okay? Okay, so next I took out one of my sheets of puff pastry. I floured my countertop here because you and my roller because you just want to kind of roll this out a little bit, okay? Make it a little bit thinner than it is and a little bit wider. Okay, so I rolled it out and then what I did was I lifted it and I put it on some parchment paper because that's going to make it easier for us to transfer it to a sheet once we have it braided and finished. Because if you try to pick it up, it may mess up the whole thing. So that's why we're doing that. So after I rolled it, I put it on some parchment, okay? Now, it's long ways this way. I know it's not really even because you've got some corner pieces sticking out here. So I'll just cut those down a little bit. And make it a little thinner, okay? Make it more rectangular. And then what I'm going to do, starting in the corner here, I'm going to cut... Just make like a slit diagonally in the corner, if you could see that. This way, up a little bit. In the okay, so you make that slit in there, and then what you're going to do is make a straight line this way. So basically what you're doing is making this triangle cut on the ends here, okay? Like that. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? See how it comes in on an angle and then straight down, so I don't know what kind of what kind of triangle they call that. Don't ask me, I'm not a math major. Then what you're gonna do going up the sides, you're gonna do the same thing on this end the other way. And yeah, we'll do that now, okay. Just to get it done, okay? So, into the corner, into the corner, and then straight down, and then straight down, until so you get these triangle things. Now, going up the two sides, you're just gonna make uh, slits in your about an inch apart, okay? Just go up and make slits all the way up. Okay? And same direction. Make sure, don't do them the opposite way. It may not turn out right. I don't know, I've never done this before. I've just seen it done and it looked really cool and it looked really fancy. So I figured, all right, if we're going to get creative, since the recipe is so easy, if we're going to get creative today, might as well get creative, okay? So there you go. Now we're just waiting for our filling to cool down a little bit. We're going to lay that in the middle here and start folding our flaps over. We'll be right back to show you how to do that. There is our cool down filling. Now this is just a base for what you can do with your strudel today. You can add raisins to this, some recipe did. Not in my strudel, there won't be raisins. You can add nuts to this. You can add whatever you want to this um, to make it the filling that you want. Cranberries, whatever. Um, just to make it your own and make it with the stuff that you like, okay? So don't necessarily say this is the only way to do it. This is just a version that I'm trying today. First time ever doing strudel or a version of strudel. And... This is kind of what I like. I just want like the puff pastry and the apple cinnamon, 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 <laughs> the apple cinnamon filling, just kind of plain and enjoying the flavor of the apples and the baked puff pastry. Okay, so now you put it down the middle. I should probably stretch that out a little bit more there. Okay, put your filling down the middle like so. And the first thing you're going to do is take your end flaps and flap that over, okay? Just kind of fold that over because you want to be able to seal in uh, to make sure all your filling doesn't leak out the sides, okay? Once you do that, what you're going to do next is, you probably should have made these longer, these slits, is just fold, go on up, and fold, okay? Fold it over, 
like I said, just keep your knife handy if you have to slit it a little more, then you slit it a little more, okay? Because you want to make sure it wraps kind of tight up against your filling, you know? That's it. And then just keep doing that. Now, I don't know if I'm doing, if these are too long of braids, but that's okay because I want some extra puff pastry with the filling anyway. So I'm just doing side to side and folding these flaps over, okay? Can you see that? There you go. Now hopefully when this bakes up, it's going to really give it that beautiful braided effect because each piece should puff up separately and you should see the separation. Okay, so my oven's 375, but wait, I have an egg here. Hmm. What I'm going to do is beat this egg and brush the top of my strudel and sprinkle a little sugar on the top just so it gets that crystallization on it and you're going to get that nice shiny uh, browning, you know, the browned coat on your top of my strudel. Alrighty, so pastry brush, brush, brush. Ah, pastry brush. Are you over there? Okay. And just take your beaten egg and brush the top of your strudel. Okay, it's time for the reveal. I haven't peeked. 20 minutes it's been in there. Let's just see what we got. Hope it's something beautiful. <laughs> Alrighty. Hey, hey. That looks pretty darn good. For our first time, look at that. That came out really nice. Alright, I'm kind of stoked about this one. It vented really nice. Now the apples will definitely be cooked through because we partially cooked them or, you know, we hand sauteed them first to cook them down a little bit. But yeah, came out really nice. I mean, it's not perfect. It's not a perfect braid, but I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> I think if you put this on a table, people wouldn't have an idea that you made this yourself. They probably think you got it at a bakery or something. Okay, so I'm going to just cut a piece here. Nice and flaky. Our puff pastry is nice and flaky. See the filling in there? Perfect. All right, let's give it a taste. Hot. Mm. Beautiful. The apples are nice and tender because we cooked them beforehand. So there's no worry about like getting that crunchy piece of apple. I mean, if you like that, you can definitely do it. Um, you know, leave them a little more undercooked. I like them when they're nice and tender like this. The puff pastry just gives you these nice, thin, crisp layers. Probably the same effect you'd get with the phyllo dough. You could probably do this with the phyllo dough, but it's a lot more work because you have to butter each um, sheet of phyllo dough and stack them to make them thicker. And then you'd have to cut them and do the whole same thing. I mean, you could definitely do it. It would give it a different consistency, but I kind of like the puff pastry with this because it's a little more, there's a little more to it than phyllo dough, you know? But you get the same effect from it. All right, people. Apple strudel day. It's all over my face. I know it. Have some apple strudel today. Go to a diner and have some if you don't want to make it. Super easy to make. You saw it's nothing. You can definitely do this one. Alrighty, see you tomorrow everybody. Enjoy your strudel. Alvita Zane. <laughs>